So I know what you're thinking. Jeff, I don't want to buy a used power supply and have it be bad and then burn all my equipment down and burn my house down and then I'll look like Austin Evans. First of all, nobody wants to look like Austin Evans. But furthermore, nobody's trying to burn your house down. So I'm going to talk to you about the principles of buying used power supplies and whether or not you should do it at all. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing I'll say about buying power supplies in general is that if you can afford to buy a brand new one, you absolutely should. Roughly speaking, a high-end unit like the P2650 from EVGA I have in my build right now, or a Seasonic G unit of one of the various brands, will come to roughly $10 to $15 a year for the expected lifespan of the unit. That's a pretty goddamn good deal, considering that a lot of them come with 10-year warranties now and should last you three or four builds into the future. How you tell if a unit is worth buying, whether it be new or used, should be something that you're well-versed in by this point if you're watching these videos. But if you're not, let me go over the basics. Number one, look for trusted reviews on websites that do this kind of thing regularly. Of course, Johnny Guru has been the gold standard for a long time. He himself doesn't actually do the reviews anymore. He has Oklahoma Wolf and a couple other people, I think, do the reviews. But they're still a great source for finding valuable detailed information on whether or not a unit is going to be of passable quality or not. But there are other websites that do it as well. Hard OCP, I really like. They're really well detailed and they actually do low AC input testing in addition to 120 volts, which is something that Johnny Guru doesn't do. I don't really know if that's necessary, but it has exposed some problems with a few units in the past. So kudos to them for trying something different. If you wanna go deeper than that, every website from Tech Power Up to Hardware Secrets to a non-tech to Tom's Hardware will do power supply reviews. Not a lot of people do them in video form because they don't make for very interesting videos, but absolutely there's a lot of written material out there and it's definitely something you should take a look at when deciding which unit to buy. Now, how do you know if a review site is doing a good job of reviewing a unit? Well, there's basic things that you should be looking for. Ripple suppression, voltage regulation, cross load testing, making sure that it actually meets the efficiency ratings. These are things that websites will all test for by essentially stressing the fuck out of the unit. Hotbox testing is certainly another one that you should watch out for. It's basically where they just pump the thing full of hot air and see how high of an ambient temperature they can pump in through that intake fan before power supply will stop working. And most power supplies actually have a temperature they are rated for that the reviewers will want to test for to see if they can actually get sustainable power delivery out of the thing under those conditions. Also, you want reviewers that are gonna tear the thing open and take a look at it. These guys, in a lot of cases, are electrical engineers. They're much more qualified than I am to do that. Basically put, if they spend a whole chapter of their review talking about the internals and you don't understand half of it, that's probably a good sign. And for the record, if you haven't seen some of my previous videos and you're not aware of this fact yet, Corsair and EVGA and Antec and Entermax and all the other companies that make power supplies, they don't actually make power supplies. I don't know if you knew this, but they just kind of put their sticker on it. They're actually made by people called ODMs or original design manufacturers. And these are the people that design them and assemble them in their factories all around the world. ODMs consist of companies like Seasonic, who also has their own brand. Uh, super flower. I'm learning now that it's flower, by the way, which is really weird. Why would they call themselves super flower? It has nothing to do with the delivery and conversion of power from AC to DC. It's just ridiculous. And then you've got companies like CWT and Fortron, otherwise known as FSP. HEC is another one. Great Wall. There's a whole bunch of ODMs out there. And it's important that you know the difference between them because each of them have their own unique history. And there are some that are fully willing to design crap units for companies that you've never heard of. And there are some that have higher standards than that and that will go out of their way to make sure that everything they issue is up to spec and of good quality. So know the difference, do your research and get educated. Power supply platform database is a phrase that you can Google that will help you immensely. I think Orion P sub or something like that dot com is their website i'll link it somewhere also there is something called the power supply review database which is incredibly useful because they have a collection of review links going back to like 2005 moving on to buying used power supplies in particular remember that warranties can actually carry forward when a used component actually changes hands on the secondary market and while companies might not formally endorse that process Usually, if you don't need a receipt, 
they're pretty much good to go. So try to get one that has a warranty intact and preferably for a long period of time. It's not cheating if they don't know you did it. Most items that do not have a proof of purchase will default to the manufacturing date of the unit. And that applies to graphics cards and motherboards and everything else. So if you happen to have something in your hands that does not have a receipt, you can give them the serial number and they will tell you when it was made. And then the warranty will usually default back to that date and you may still be covered. Even if a very old unit is still working, it's probably not advisable for you to use it. Now, I know you've seen videos of mine in the past use things like Antec Earthwatts power supplies from like seven years ago and so on. I'm not strictly saying that they won't work, but unless you have enough knowledge of electronics to open one of these things up and have a look at them and make a determination as to whether or not they're still going to work, I would not recommend you do that. You can usually save more than enough money to justify buying a used power supply, by getting one that's a few years old and still under warranty, then taking a risk, saving an extra 15 bucks or so and getting something that's really old and not under warranty. That is something I would not recommend at all to anyone, but people who are absolutely certain that they know what they're doing. Next up, native connectors are very important. Remember, when a power supply manufacturer makes their power supplies and they decide what cables to put on the fucking thing, the connectors they include are an indication of what kind of power it can deliver to where. Do not use Molex to six and eight pin adapters. They are a bad idea for a whole plethora of reasons. There's this unreasonable concern floating around the internet about power supplies in general. People are always like, oh, I'm worried that a power supply of shit condition and shit value is gonna explode my house. If it's the thoroughly reviewed unit and it doesn't burn shit down during testing, it's probably not going to burn shit down once you put it in your system. And the reason being is that most modern power supplies are built with protections to prevent that sort of thing. One last thing I want to stress is that power supplies are the sort of thing that people upgrade way, way too often, which is exactly why you see a lot of them for sale on Kijiji. Most of them are perfectly fine. Like I said in the past, the majority of people who are selling used goods on Kijiji or on Craigslist are actually good people and they're just looking to repurpose their stuff. But be on the favorable side of that equation and don't upgrade your power supply unnecessarily. Wattages overall are going down, not up. My 650p2 EVGA in this system right here is grossly underutilized. Under load, my system only draws about 400 watts from the wall. And given the efficiency rating of this power supply, that puts it at roughly 360-ish watts in DC to my components. There was a time when a 650 watt power supply couldn't be expected to do Crossfire and SLI. That's why 750 and 850 watt power supplies exist. But the bottom line is the demand for these units should come down as people start to understand that TDPs are dropping and that the amount of power that we used to think that we needed is no longer necessary. Anyway, my next few videos coming up are going to be a little bit weird. It might be a little bit out of order. I've already filmed one that I've got to really edit down and do some work on because it involves the history of CPUs and GPUs and why GPU technology has been gallivanting ahead but full fucking charge like a goddamn horny toad while CPU technology has been sitting still. So that should be an interesting sort of compunomics video. And then I've also got Build Vlog 6 coming up, which is going to feature a very interesting concept that relates to this video, where I take a brand new power supply and a brand new case, things which you should view as investments for the long term, and I fill the rest of the system with used components, including the R9 390X that I picked up for 40 bucks. So that should be an interesting video. You'll want to watch that. Anyway, at OFA on Twitter, please follow me. I don't update it much, but when I do, it's important. And uh, that should be it. And thanks for watching.